Hello world, it's Almond Milk again, and I have returned with another challenge video for this Pico Gym workout series. In this video, we're going to be solving transformation in the reverse engineering category worth 20 points. Let's get started. I wonder what this really is. We get a little encryption file here. We'll go ahead and download that. And then we get this algorithm right here. So I would, I'm going to guess that this is the flag or the encoded flag, right? And this right here is the encryption algorithm for the flag. So the flag was encrypted using this algorithm and we're going to try to reverse engineer this algorithm to try and decode the flag. So let's go ahead and make our transformation folder. We will drag our and let's go ahead and take a look at see what we're dealing with. Okay, so these are Chinese characters. However, you put it in a Chinese translator, it may or may not come up with something in English, but this isn't really Chinese. These are just Unicode representations of ASCII values. So we probably could just try different Unicode decoders until we find the right one and get the flag that way, but we can maybe do that at the end. Let's actually find an actual way to resolve this using the algorithm they gave us. I'm not actually that good at reverse engineering, but let's play around with the encryption algorithm they gave us and see if we can't come up with something. So let's go ahead and start up Visual Studio Code. This does not select our language. Let's go ahead and use Python the encryption algorithm is written in Python. So let's go ahead and just paste that in there. Do this. Comment that out since we're going to be playing with it rather than actually using it. And we will save this to our new folder we just made. We'll call it We'll just call it dbc.py. All right, save. Okay, let's go ahead and take our flag in here, right? Since that's what we're going to be decoding. And let's go ahead and sign a variable called flag. And we'll make sign it a value of string. We should be able to use these characters in Python. Python's pretty flexible on what we paste into it and, it can, and what kind of bytes it can read. Actually, I'll post, paste this below this all right so like I said before I'm not that good at reverse engineering but from what I can tell this is taking characters of uh, the original flag right and it's doing a bitwise shift which means it's shifting the bit value the binary value of our decimal value of the flag character to the left by eight bits and then it's adding that to the decimal value of the next flag character that's next to it. So basically, say we have our P and I from, let's, let's just say we have the beginning of the flag Pico CTF. If we take the first character P, it's moving, it's converting that to a, its decimal value, which is whatever, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, so we'll just, actually we can just, We can take get the ord of p. Oh, whoops. One hundred twelve, right? So it's taking one hundred twelve, and it's doing a bitwise shift of eight. So if we do one twelve and we do a bitwise shift of eight, we get two thousand eight hundred sixty-two. Then it's adding that to the decimal value of the next ordinate, so that would be i, right? So we do ord of i, that's 105, so it would be 28.672 plus 105, and that gives us 28.77, right? So 105, which equals 28.777. All right? 
So I, I guess I should explain this first. This right here is what in Python called list comprehension. And you can actually just break that down into its separate parts to make it more readable. So this would actually be for i in range of 0 lin of flag to, and then you'd have some kind of list defined, and you do list.append, right, because it's list comprehension. So you would do list.append, and you would take this part right here, and put that in there. All right, and so that's basically what this chunk of data is doing. And then at the end, it's joining the characters together into one cohesive string, right? So we'll just go ahead and take those out. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. This two is basically how many values to skip in each iteration, right? So if we're going for i in range of zero to the length of the flag, each iteration is going to basically skip two rather than one, right? So instead of going P I C O T F in order, it's going to go P I C O C T and then F and open brace, right? It's going to do pairs. So that just makes it more difficult to decode since now we know that the flag here is actually 19 characters. So the decoded flag is going to be 38 characters because each one of these characters is being represented by two plain text characters. So for every two plain text characters of the original flag, it encodes the pair to be one character. All right, so knowing that there's actually multiple ways you could solve this, you could try reversing the algorithm. This is a 20 point challenge. So, you know, I don't necessarily know. I mean, if I really got down to it, I could probably reverse this, but it would take a lot of time. So let's think of a different way. Let's instead of trying to reverse the algorithm, let's actually try brute forcing it. And what I mean by that is we know what the encryption algorithm, like the actual encrypting part of the algorithm is, right? So what we can do is using that algorithm, we could actually loop through all possibilities of combinations of pairs of characters, right? Let's say, for example, we could literally have a loop going that in each loop, it does a different pair of characters and puts those characters through this algorithm, right? And then we get an output of whatever these Chinese characters are, right? And if it matches the Chinese character that we're on in the index of the loop, then we have a match. This will make more sense once I actually dive into it. But basically what I mean by combinations characters is it'll be like AA, AB, so on and so forth. And then, you know, it'll keep going until it gets to PI, right? And then it'll PH and then it'll find a match, right? And hopefully that PI will actually be this first character because we know what the flag format is, right? So we're going to assume that that PI is that first character. And so if it finds a match, then it's going to move on to the next character and start the process over again and start comparing the combinations of pairs to the next character. And then we'll keep going until we pop a flag, right? So we're actually going to use a nifty library called ITERTOOLS. And what this is going to allow us to do is get a list of all these possible combinations. And it's actually pretty simple to use. So we're going to define a variable, new variable called care set. And we're going to set that equal to the product of, well, let's, OK. So what kinds of characters are in, typically in a flag? You have all the lowercase letters, right? And you have all the uppercase characters. Then we also have all the numbers, probably. And then we also will have our curly braces and probably underscores. There may be other special characters, but we'll figure that out if our flag looks messed up or if it's not complete or something like that, right? We'll try to figure out what the missing characters are. Now let's go ahead and convert this to a list to work with. And I'll go ahead and print this care set out so that you can see what it kind of looks like from a programming perspective. 
it's actually going to give us a list of tuples we can loop through, essentially, right? And then compare those tuples, which will give us two character tuples, right? Because that's what we want, to our flag value. Oh, one more parameter I forgot to add in here was actually the repeat equals two, and that's going to tell us we want basically pairs and we can repeat characters so like we can do a a a b and whatnot so let's continue on and i'm going to go ahead and print this so you can like i said before and so you can see what this looks like this is a python file yes all right so there you go see look as i said a a a b a c and you're going all the way through all these different combinations right so when we brute force it right we know what the flag format is supposed to look like so we can actually go ahead and put those characters at the beginning of our pattern and it'll actually match them faster since we already know what they are and so now we just got to get rid of the other versions of them from the rest of the pattern since we don't need repeats of them right and there's one uh, let's see and I think I got them all I don't think I made any mistakes there yeah all right so now we should be pretty good and that's just so it'll go faster since we're trying to match all possible combinations of pairs of characters with each character of our encoded flag, we're going to start with our loop, our first loop, with our flag. And we can do for i, well, let's just do for f and flag, okay? That way we know it's referring to the flag. And then we're going to actually loop through our care set. So we'll do for i and care set. And this method of looping is basically saying for each character in flag and then for each tuple in care set, right? Because this is actually grabbing the entire tuple, right? Each one of these pairs right here. And we can actually individually reference each value of the pairs, which you'll see in a, in a little bit here. So now we want to compare do a comparison, right? And we want to do a comparison of something that's going to be equal to our character and our flag, right? Because that's what we're trying to compare to. So what do we use here, right? Well, we can easily just use the encryption algorithm they gave us against itself. So what we need is this portion right here. And we'll take that and just paste it in. Now, we're not done modifying this yet, because as you notice, our flag variable is not actually this, like this is not the same flag variable as this, right? This is actually referring to the original plain text flag. So we need to do it in reference to how we have our thing set up, right? So we know that flag of i is actually going to be p, right? The first character of the flag, the actual plain text flag. So we know that the first character of our plain text flag is going to be actually the first character in our PI tuple, which is right here. So what we can do is we can just say i at 0. And that'll grab our p from our tuple, right? And then we have another value right here, flag of i plus 1. That's referencing the next index in the original plain text flag. So we can just do i at 1, and that gives us our the second value of our tuple. So i0 is the p, and i of 1 is the i. Pretty straightforward. So then we're going to go ahead and print our characters out if we get a match here, right? Because then we know that that's going to be part of the flag. So we can go ahead and do dot join, right? because we're going to want to join everything in our tuple together, right? So we're going to join i, and then we're actually going to do end equals double quote. And what that does is actually say, hey, don't put a new line after the print statement, right? It's going to consolidate all our output into one line. So let's go ahead and just clear the console real quick, and we'll go ahead and run this and see what we get. We have an error. 
let's find out what I did wrong. Oh, my bad. I forgot to remove the flag variable when I did this. All right. So let's let's try that again. Hey, that worked. And that looks like a complete flag. We can go ahead and check. Remember we said originally that since it's encoding pairs of characters, we can go ahead and check and see that's 19 like we said before. And if we check this, uh, I guess it doesn't. We'll, we'll just copy and paste this up here. And then we can actually select this. And that's 38. So exactly twice as many as our encoded flag. So we know that we have the full flag now. So we can go ahead and go and take that and paste it in there, submit. And we just earned 20 points. Now that was a fairly intuitive challenge for a 20 pointer, but I feel like they wanted you to actually maybe recognize what this is. And so we can actually use CyberChef, which I think I had mentioned in a previous video. And we can go ahead and say CyberChef. And CyberChef actually has this magic function right here that attempts to detect various properties of the input data and suggest which operations could help to make more sense of it. We might be able to just use this. This is not loading very well. Oh, there we go. We might be able to just use this magic recipe, as it's called in here, to get our flag. So we can try putting this in here. We do intensive mode. And see, we have different encodings here. Exor. Let's see if our flag is in here. Right, let's do a control F. Hey, there it is. So yeah. It was a type of Unicode encoding, UTF dash, and that's where those Chinese characters came from. Because different Unicode inputs give you different outputs depending on what the Unicode encoding is. And this looks like it was UTF sixteen Big Indian. And that wraps it up for this video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.